thank you all for staying uh, in my lectures and uh, uh, time flies. <laughs> so you already the last one. I thought I can talk a lot. Okay. So, anyway, so today I will uh, I will talk maybe more than two thirds of time. I will talk about the the last lecture, which is uh, the in the outer GUI uh, scheme to uh, uh, vortex dynamics of oil in the flow. Uh, but let me first finish the what we left uh, the pyrobolic GUI, the in the outer GUI for the energy critical Fujita equation. So uh, the problem I want, the, the result I want to prove is uh, for this energy critical for the dimension four, we want to construct a solution, we fix a small time and fix the position. And we want to construct a solution that blow up at the, the position and the blow up rate is like uh, log uh, square over T minus two. Okay, so we do in the auto GUI. So we uh, write, look for solution of U0 plus some cover function times phi. This is inner and this is outer. Okay. And so the inner problem is solved in the inner variable. Okay, in the inner part is very close to the singularity, and the outer problem is solved everywhere. So the inner problem is, uh, is a linearized problem. Okay. And uh, uh, in, in a inner part, and the outer problem is uh, is uh, all the all the, the remaining part. Now the inner outer green, the inner part, the outer part enter into the inner part by this by this is three double zero square plus i. The outer problem enters into by the inner problem. Uh, the inner problem enters into outer problem by the cover function. Okay, so for the inner problem. We do a uh, inner variable uh, rescaling, or uh, inner variable rescaling. We use uh, y and the tau, and so the so the 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 lambda zero becomes a w, okay, and the linear equation will become uh, phi tau la plus phi plus three double square phi plus uh, the outer interaction. Okay? okay, so this is the the linear problem we need to solve. Now we, we, we solve the linear problem in modes. So let's first for mode zero, which is the radial symmetric case. We consider radial symmetric case. Now for the radial symmetric case, we have one kernel, which is Z5, which is the scaling. So, so we assume the right-hand side is orthogonal to, to the scaling. Now we also have instability. I remember our, 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 our bubble, the bubble is unstable, okay? So we need to choose an initial data, choose some initial data. So this is the instability. So the result is that uh, what we have, if, if uh, edge decays like uh, tau in, in time and in space, then we can find a solution also decay in space, decay in space, decay in time, but inside is much worse. Uh, inside you lose a lot of hours. Okay, almost all the R's will be lost except one R to the minus minus sigma. Okay, but this is good for the for the inner outer group. Okay? So the question is, how do we how to find this solution? Okay, how to find this solution? As I said before, this is a, this is no freedom. Home. You always have a solution for this problem. Okay, and so you have to choose a solution. Well, how do we choose a solution? So we, we do this in three steps. In the first step was to just solve purely the elliptical problem. Yeah, forget about, forget about the top five tau, okay? I just solve the elliptical problem. And for the elliptical problem, I can use the free home. So I have a I, I, I fast decay solution. I have a solution which decay like edge. The big edge decays like edge, okay? This is just elliptic. I forget about the pyrobolic, right? Okay, so I found a solution big H. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to solve the linearized operator with this big H on the right hand side, but the low was organic condition. I don't assume any was organic condition for this right hand side, okay? So this is a linear theory without any was organic condition. Right? Now you can imagine that without a water condition, your solution will be much worse. Yeah? 
And in fact, this is what you have, the solution lose a lot of hours because you don't have any orthogonal condition. Okay. Now, this is part of our linear theory. So once we get this, get this solution without orthogonal condition, we just acting L on both sides. Okay. Well, acting L zero on both sides. Uh, this is the solution without orthogonal condition. You 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 act okay. Uh, L on both sides. L zero on both sides. And this is your return to your original solution, okay? Original equation. Now, we are acting on this uh, L on this side. Of course, you can, you're gonna gain a lot of a decay because you are taking two derivatives. And so this is how you get, uh, how we construct the solution with mode zero, right? So just to repeat the two, three steps. First step, we solve the elliptic part, okay? Without solve the unique part, and the second we solve the problem without also getting the condition, and finally we just take L zero with respect to the, the this solution without also getting condition, and this is our solution. Okay, so what so what what remains is to solve the to develop a linear theory without also getting the condition. Yeah? so we want a linear theory without also getting the condition. Now, the estimate you are expect will fair by in the interior, okay? You're gonna lose a lot of hours, okay? But up to return, go to the boundary, you will be good. You have gained some decay. So how do we solve this problem without a certain condition? So what in, for this problem, we're gonna impose the division boundary condition, okay? So we solve this problem with the division boundary condition. Okay, so, uh, so first of all, uh, our the, this big H is not good. It's you know very slow decay, right? This big H is just decay like y to the sigma. First, we want to concentrate the error. So first, we solve, we solve the this H. We solve this hypothetical problem with some cutoff in the potential. Now we know that. This linearized operator certifies maximum principle outside a outside a, a fixed region. The only problem is the in the inner part. Okay, so so you just do a cutoff. Okay, and then you can solve this by just sub and shift solution method. Okay, and you can get a solution that's called a phi one. And the, so then your error now is concentrated enough. It's compact support enough. Okay. So your error will have a compact support and, uh, and uh, you, you have a uh, uh, division boundary condition. And this is a problem we want to solve. We should use a BR, not, not a B2. And we can adjust the C so that this is also orthogonal to the C0, which is the first eigenvalue. Okay, so we have exist, as I said before, you also have an existence. The only problem is what is the RP estimates, okay? How to get an upper estimate for this problem? Okay, so we do the usual energy estimate. So we multiply both sides by phi, and then we integrate because we have a division boundary condition, we get this. Now, since I have division boundary condition, and since I also assume that the was organic condition to the first eigenfunction, then I have some spectrum type. But the spectrum type, for the spectrum type, I'm going to lose a lot of hours. So I have to estimate how many hours I lose. I lose like a one of R square log R, okay? And this is how we lose a lot of hours here, okay? So then once you have this, you then you, you standard the uh, ground hole inequality, you give your the L2 estimate, okay? But the L2 estimate, you're going to lose a lot of hours. You're going to lose R to the four minus sigma. Now, once you have L2 estimates, then you have L infinity estimate, right? Then, okay, uh, just your standard hyperbolic uh, estimate, you get L infinity. But now the L infinity, you lose a lot of us, right? The L infinity lose a lot of us. 
but then you just use a barrier, okay? For outside, outside a fixed ball, you just use a barrier. And the barrier will be just y to the minus two because this is a fundamental solution. So your solution, you lose a lot of R's inside, but you gain a little bit of uh, decay uh, far away. And, and so, this, uh, so this is the second solution. You combine these two solutions together, and this is the whole the solution you get for the one without a organic condition. You see that you lose R to the four inside and you gain Y square, okay, near the boundary. So this is the, the, the most difficult part of the linear theory. Uh, this is the motor theory, okay, the motor theory. Any questions? Okay, uh, this actually is the most difficult part of the analysis. Now for the other modes, so in mode one to four, which is correspond to the translation modes, and it turns out that in the other, for the other modes, you don't lose anything inside. Right? You don't lose anything. And then we just use a bluff argument. Okay? And so in the mode one to four or higher, Whatever your right hand side you have, you're going to do the same. You don't lose any R. Okay. You, 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 it's like a elliptical problem. Okay. This will be like a elliptical problem. So, uh, so, so this is the estimate for motor one to four. So, how do we, how to prove this estimate? Okay. So, prove this estimate by bluff argument. But first, uh, with, first, we will show that phi. Uh, it's also orthogonal to ZJ. And uh, you just say, uh, okay, okay, this is just uh, you multiply by ZI and then you use the initial condition and then you get the uh, 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 integral of phi, phi is also orthogonal to ZI. So we prove this uh, upper estimate by, by blob argument, okay? So we assume that you have a sequence of uh, time and sequence of uh, uh, place yk so that uh, this is the one okay but the right hand side is a small uh, and so this so you have a sequence of solutions like this satisfies the equation right and the two cases first case is your block of place is finite okay your 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 block take okay uh, takes place in a finite region now in the final region, you just do, okay, limiting process, do a simple limiting process uh, in a compact set, okay? And then what is the limiting problem? The limiting problem is an ancient solution, right? To the linearized operator, right? It's an ancient, you get an ancient solution <clears throat> to the linearized homogeneous operator, okay? Uh, the pyrobonic. And you have all this also the condition. Right? And then you have this decay condition because your YK is just bounded, right? So you get an ancient solution to a pyrobolic linear operator, right? And then you need, then you need to classify all solutions to this problem, for this pyrobolic problem, you have to classify. And you can show that all the solutions to the pyrobolic problem are just spanned by, by ZJ, okay, by the kernel, and then you use a second condition to show that this is impossible. Right? So, so this is the first limit. It's an ancient solution for the linearized operator in the whole space. Right? The second limit is when yk goes to plus infinity. Okay, so you block escape to infinity. Right? You block escape to infinity. So when you do the, your, okay, you do this kind of scaling, you will scale your solution in space and in time by this way. And, and then what is the limit? What your limit is an ancient solution of the heat equation. You have an ancient solution for the heat equation R4, but with some singularity. The singularity is like, uh, is, is mild, it's like, uh, Z to the minus sigma, right? 
this is because of your assumption, right? So you blob, blob a process. So, so, so by this blob process, we are reduced to study the ancient solution of a Higgs equation with some singularity, okay? So using the theory removal singularity for ancient solution of a Higgs equation, and you can show that this is also zero. And here, the sigma here, this, this is important. This means that your singularity is not too bad, right? If your singularity is too bad, then you cannot have this kind of removal singularity. So, so for ancient solution for the heat equation, uh, you can also classify the solution. You, you can show that this is a removal, okay? This is a removal. And so, 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 so in the modes, one and four, we do a blob analysis. And we have two limit problem. One is the pyrobotic linearized operator. Okay, we need to classify this one. And another one is the ancient solution of the heat equation. And we have to use the removal of singularity for the ancient solution of heat, heat equation and to, to exclude this. Okay? And so this is the mode one to four. And uh, we don't lose anything. We have a good, very good uh, linear theory. Okay? So any questions, remarks? And I may have a question. So your case yeah. one to prove that phi infinity equals zero, case one. Is that is that easy? Is that standard or what? Uh, oh no, not standard. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because we need a lot of uh, decay in tau, right? Was it not a decay in y? And then you have to differentiate this one in tau one more time and okay. And do a bilinear form and this is it's not trivial. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah. I, but the second case seems to be more standard, right? Uh, I could not find that in the, in the literature, but it should be easy. I don't know, maybe uh, uh, talk knows this, I don't know. But we have a proof, it's an easy proof. Yeah, okay. Just but it's easier than the first case. It's yeah, easier, yeah, easier, than, easier than the first case. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it, it, how K is also a sequence? Is that yeah, yeah, it's a sequence where your, your, your maximum is at 10. Yeah, your time. Okay, so the tau k will not kind of convert to zero, right? No, tau k converts to infinity. To infinity. Tau k will convert to infinity. So you get the ancient solution. I see. So you're going back, you get, okay. you get the okay. ancient solution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is the linear theory. And in between the linear theory and the final problem, there's a lot of uh, things you need to check, like a Lipschitz property and the regularity, all this. I will not, I don't have time to discuss this. So let me just explain to you your, what is the final step. So by the linear theory, we need a was organic condition. We need a five was organic condition to solve the linear problem, okay? And uh, one respect to scaling and uh, the four respect to the translation, right? So what is, what is the edge? Now remember last time I explained, our edge contains two parts. One part is from the, from the slow decay of the error. We have to correct this by a global term. We call it phi zero. And another part is from the outer problem, right? The outer problem also enters into the error, okay? So, and so the, if, you, if we translate the, 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 the was organic condition, and this is the main error, and what you get is the Kasai will be like a zero, okay? The, the dynamics of uh, the spike. But the lambda will be a non-local equation. And the, the number, the equation for lambda contains two parts. One part comes from this phi zero, and this will give you this non-local equation, non-local. And another part comes from the outer problem. And so outer problem, you have to freeze your coefficient. And this comes from the outer problem. So we need to solve this problem, right? This lambda. This is the equation for lambda, equation for the scaling parameter. So you see that the outer problem has a big effect because the outer problem gives you the coefficient. And in order that this problem is solved, we need that this is negative. Right? The outer problem should be negative. So as a result, we see that our solution is sign changing. Right? That's why you, you get a sign changing. 
because your outer solution, the outer problem is negative, right? Should be negative. So you, you should have a sign changing. So anyway, so we need to solve this problem, which is a non-local ODE, okay? And uh, we expect the solution will be like this, okay? But still, how do you show all solutions must be like this? And uh, you okay, and, uh, and how do we solve this non-local ODE? And we it's take a lot of time to solve, and uh, is uh, at we need like another twenty to thirty pages to solve this simple non-local ODE. I will not do this here, but it's uh, it's quite uh, intriguing this uh, non-local ODE. But you get this water, which is generic. This water is generic. You can show the solution to this problem. This is the generic water. Okay, so that's why all the blob is like this. Okay. And uh, so this, we finished the, 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 the proof of demo one. Okay, any questions, remarks? So uh, for, for, the, for the second, uh, for the higher order mod, so you, you have to make the guess that solution is decay like that, right? In order to make the flow up argument. Is it right? Uh, the, the solution you, you mean the decay this decay no, the, the the other uh, the 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 flow off the, the, go go back go back more can you go back more yeah can you go more one more yeah you you know the, so you 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 have to make the guess that's the solution be, behave like that or how do you yeah, know yeah. That, uh, before you make the flow up argument yeah 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 but you choose your 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 Cauchy data which is initially zero data. Okay. Yeah. You have to use this. You use this zero use that data. one to, to make yeah. sure that, uh, it's behavior like the homo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, I will take a few minutes to discuss some new applications and uh, uh, the pipework green because this is a lot of this happening just in the last few years. Uh, uh, first, let me discuss uh, the final profile for harmonic by flow. Uh, this is the, the paper we developed uh, the pipe of GUI. And uh, so you, you, for the, for the harmonic by flow, which, which you is going from a two dimension domain to S2, and this is a harmonic by flow. And you can construct a solution plot uh, at any given point, multiple points. And the drop rate is, uh, is long. Okay, it's this. It's the same like a dimension four. It's the Katie equation dimension four. But for for the Hamilton pipe, U does not pull up. It's the gradient U pulls up. So the so the gradient U the pull up rate is for the gradient U. Right? So this I call forward pull up. Uh, forward pull up. Right? But we also discover the same method. Also, you can do two different kind of pull up. One is the reverse bubbling. So the bubble, the, this bubble you can continue, right? So you can uh, uh, continue this bubble. So you can have, you have a bubble solution for T less than capital T. And then at the T equals to capital T, you can use the trace. And then you can put a reverse bubble for T greater than capital T. So your, your, your bubble can, once, once you have a bubble, you can now continue the bubble, okay? Just do a reverse bubble. So you can have a solution which is bubble for T less than capital T and also block for, for T greater than capital T. And, and so this is a kind of continuation of a bubble. And this is quite interesting the, for this harmonic mic flow. So you have a reverse bubble, you have a continuation. Your bubble, you can continue the bubble, okay? This is a, Continuation of up. Now, for this, you can use the same theory. Uh, the same thing works for reverse bubble as well. It's just become an ancient solution. Uh, become ancient solution. And another kind of bubble is uh, called a spontaneous bubble. It's quite interesting. It's also interesting. So, when time t less than capital T, nothing happened. Okay. But then, when t greater than capital T, then suddenly you have a bubble coming, right? So it's called a spontaneous bubble, right? 
And, and the, the generic rate for the span tennis bubble is a log over t minus t, okay? So you lose a log, it's not a log square, it's a log order. And this is generic. Uh, this bubble rate is also generic. So, so, so for harmony by flow, you have forward bubbly and reverse bubbly and also spontaneous bubbly. You have all this kind of a bubbly phenomena uh, uh, for, 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 for the harmony by flow. Yeah, that's a question. Yeah, yeah. So before time capital T, so when you say O1, but you don't know what is its behavior. So it, does it have- Oh, we know, we know, we know. It's, it's like, this is C infinity. Yeah, it's- Okay, so it has a yeah. limit point. Is that, does it, yeah. it has a yeah, limit? Yeah, 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 you have a limit. Yeah, okay, limit okay. quantity, yeah. And after that, immediately it goes to yeah. infinity. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, so I have discussed the uh, final time, right? You can also, we can also deal with the infant time. And the so infant time is that when, when you go, to, you have a global existence of solution, but the solution blows up at the infinity, right? that is called infant time. Now for infant time is more rigid, you know, Fina and Ken, they conjecture that only infant time should only happen in dimensions three and four, only dimensions three and four. And uh, two years ago, we, we solved this conjecture in dimension three. So in dimension three, if you take a u to the five, and if you take a fast decay, a little bit decay, uh, the Cauchy data have a little bit decay, and then you have a solution with a continuum, you know, blow rate, which is depends on your decay rate. Right? So, so, so for this problem, there's no boundary, nothing. It's just the what the decay at the infinity gives you the blow rate. So another kind of phenomena is uh, in interesting is the bubble tower. And so you can place, you can have a bubble which the same hyperbolic problem, there's a bubble which is which is bubble on the top of the another bubble. And you can compare the rate of the bubble, the bubble rate and the, all this by whether reduce the OD but the reduce the ODE problem and uh, all this, uh, uh, this uh, the bubble tower, okay? This is the first time you have bubble tower, okay? Bubble tower solution. And, and for half harmonic map, not harmonic map, uh, if you consider half harmonic map, which is square root of Na, Na plus, and this is from R to S1, okay? To S1. So uh, for half harmonic map, you should not expect finite time, but you should have uh, infinite time blob. And this is what we prove. We have infinite time blob, and the blob rate is like an exponential symbol, okay? Exponential. So this is uh, another, and uh, the interesting for this uh, paper is that you can now generalize the inner outer going for the fractional operator as well. Right? And, uh, and you take a lot of, argument to do the, but you can also generalize the whole argument to fraction operators. And for kinder cycle, which is a very interesting uh, 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 reaction deficient system. And uh, uh, there, there, are, there are papers on even time block, okay? Uh, in the video case, and, uh, and using the, using the inner outer green, and we have uh, infinite time, same infinite time blob in the general case, in the most, and also we show that blob is a stable. Right? And we can compute the blob rate, which is like a log t. And uh, there's also finite time blob and the class of blob and all this, uh, this is a working in progress. And uh, now the new perspective for this is that is a direction diffuse system. So the inner outer green can also work in reaction deficient system, not just for single equation for this, uh, 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 is it, for reaction diffusion system, you can also use the inner outer green. And finally, uh, you can also apply this inner outer green for fluids. So you can couple the, couple the uh, 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 harmonic map and with enough stokers, 
And uh, this becomes a so-called nematic and liquid crystal flow. And uh, this uh, non-open question is uh, whether or not uh, in the 2D case, you have a finite time block. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, with uh, my student Nai and uh, Professor Fang Huanin and Sang Yong Wang and my student Zhou, and we, we applied the in the outer GUI for this system, but this is a couple with a of stokers. So we need uh, some kind of uh, smallness for the diffuse for this, for this, uh, for this company. But as long as this company is uh, small, then we can do in the outer green and we can, and we have a final temple up for the nematic liquid crystal flow. And this problem is completely non vibrational So this, and, uh, but the still the in the outer green works, okay? In the outer green works for, if, we, if we in this case. So, and there are many, many other uh, recently developments like uh, infant temple, like young mills, Okay, you can yam meals and all this uh, uh, lot of uh, interesting questions uh, for, for the singularity formation for, for, for time dependent problems. And then uh, you can apply the in the outer grid. So, and with this, I will finish the lecture four. And before I move on to lecture five, any questions, any remarks? I have a question about your uh, li uh, liquid crystal. Yeah, Maybe yeah, not. yeah. Do you have the uh, precise knowledge about the, the how small is the absolute zero? Oh yeah. Uh, okay. No, this is a base. No, we. Yes, uh, it depends on some constant. Yeah, uh, depends on some constant from the linear theory. <laughs> okay, from the linear yeah. theory in the in the harmonic map flow. Okay, yeah. thank you. In that case, I have asked a little bit more detail. So when you say blow up, is that blow up of V in what norm or blow up uh, for D in what norm? Oh, very good question. Uh, is, is the gradient D blow up? Okay. Yeah. And the velocity, we, we, we think it will not blow up, but we don't, we, it's like a log. We can only give an estimate like a log, but we believe it should not, the velocity should not blow up. Okay. But only great in D will pull up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, uh, now let me go to the last lecture the GUI method applied to the uh, vortex dynamics uh, of uh, oil and flow. Now we're going to change the problem. Now we are no longer deal with the elliptic problem or parabolic problem. We are now deal with uh, transport equation, right? So, and this is a well-known oil and equation uh, the, in the 2D case was uh, incompressible. So we assume it's uh, incompressible, right? So what, this is the oil and equation. Now uh, for the 2D oil and equation, the, the most convenient form is the vorticity. Right? You use the vorticity and the stream function. And this will become a just a transport equation for the vorticity. And uh, so the stream function is related to for this is just uh, the Poisson equation, not plus cosine equals uh, omega, right? Now, uh, this is a well-known, this, uh, this has been studied, uh, you know, many, okay, it's a well-known problem. And uh, you do here in 1963, proof of the well post is in L infinity, right? So if, if your initial condition is L infinity, then the solution exists globally. Uh, you have a global existence. Okay. And what we're interested in is in the solution, when those are solutions that concentrate, when the vorticity uh, become very concentrated, develop a Dirac merger. Okay. So the, the, this is the solution we're, we're interested in. So, and this is called a single vortex solution. And this kind of solution. Uh, was first discovered by Heimholz in 1858 and we discovered by Kirchhoff and Ruth and, and then even Lin, uh, Lin Jiaqiao, uh, Cici Lin in 1941. So, so for, for the 2D vortex, 2D uh, organized solution, there is a solution. Uh, 
singular vortex solution. The vorticity is just some Dirac measures at some points. And uh, the, so the so the, the stream function is just some Green's some uh, summation of some Green's Green's function. Now, so if we plug uh, this kind of answers in, this is a very singular, right? This is not L infinity, right? This is Dirac measure. So if we plug this one in, and do formal computation, just the formal computation. Uh, this is a formal, okay? Everything is a formal here, okay? And what you're going to get is, is uh, uh, the order equation becomes, uh, becomes uh, this, okay? uh, uh, some quantity here and times uh, gradient Dirac. Now, okay, whatever this means, yeah, gradient Dirac is very singular, but everything is formal. Let's think about it. everything is formal, right? okay? So, so formally, if this quantity equals zero, you have a solution to the to the order. Now this function equals zero means that the, the location must the vortex must solve an OD system, right? So so this is called uh, Kirchhoff Ruth function. Uh, this is Hamiltonian. So so in the formal comp computation says if the locations solve the Hamiltonian. Okay, so this is a Hamiltonian. Okay, then formally it is a solution. Okay, you have a single vortex solution to 2D. Okay, now this is a form argument. Now the question is can we rigorously prove this? So it, this is called a dynamical correspondence problem or disorganization of vortices. So the question is. I gave a solution to the Kirchhoff rules uh, uh, system, okay? This is a dynamic system. You take an initial condition, so the particles will move, okay? The particles will move. Now, suppose the particles don't collide. Uh, if it's a collide, it's, it's a different story. The particles don't collide. So the question is, can we find a regular solution to the owner such that in some limit, okay? The, 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 in the limit, your, your, your vortex approaches to the singular solution. Right? So this is called a dynamic correspondence problem. So you, you, you have this case of rules of dynamics. You want to find a regular solution. You want to recognize the vortex so that the, the vortex also follow this dynamics, right? follow the same dynamic. So this problem has been uh, solved in 1993 by Machado and uh, Pamphorenti in, this is a very famous result. And uh, yeah, and the, the result they said is that, okay, if you have a collisionist uh, 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 solution to the, to the system, to the equation of rules, you can find a solution uh, to the, to the uh, uh, to the owner and uh, the limit is like as the weak limit is that uh, you have a, a distribution sense uh, the the this this converges to the singular solution, right? and and there are many many technical assumptions in the in the paper as well. For example, uh, your your initial condition must be stay must stay away from from these vortexes. Okay, must have complex support away from the vortices. You, you cannot have support near the vortex. There are many, many technical assumptions, but we, under these technical assumptions, and uh, they prove the dynamic correspondence. But this result is, uh, is not a satisfied way because this is just a distribution sense. And you don't have a precise estimate. What is the error, okay? What can we say about the solution, what is the error? And uh, so uh, our purpose is to, to find what is the next order term, okay? To find the next order term. So we found a solution. We, we desynchronize the vortex. We found a system, uh, uh, a desynchronized uh, vortex, okay? And uh, which are explicit 
the recognition of this vortex. So what is the recognition? This is our recognition. So our vorticity is just a, some uh, a summation of the new wheel solution. We take a summation of the new wheel. And this will go to a, this will go to a Dirac magic, right? This as you some conserve, this will go to a Dirac magic. And and uh, and uh, accordingly, we should recognize uh, recognize the, the Green's function yeah, by this way. Okay, Green's function at this. Way. And so, our result says if you have a conditionless solution for the kitchen for rules, uh, okay, then we can find a precise solution to the two D order. And and the leading order is the summation of the new wheel. And, uh, and, uh, and then we have precise estimate for the next order. The next order is point-wise, is a point-wise uh, estimate uh, 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 for, for in the next order, which is point-wise L infinity estimate for the next order. So, so, so this gives a precise information on the disorganization, okay? The precise uh, 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 description of the of the uh, of the vortex, okay? What has dynamics? So this is the result. I want to I want to prove. I want to show how we can use the inner outer going to do this to prove this result. Uh, before I go to the proof, any questions on the on this uh, on this problem? You have a small k there. Is that small k is a capital N? Uh, this is the number of uh, spikes. Yeah, this should be capital N. Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, this should be capital N. Yeah. So these are number of uh, vortices. Yeah, okay. this should I be see. capital N. Yeah. So uh, what are the main ingredients in the construction? So first, we need to improve the approximation in power of uh, uh, epsilon using elliptic and the transport equation. And in fact, we need to improve when the up to epsilon to the eighth order, which is much, which is, you know, they, you'll never see this in the single perturbation theory, okay? But this is what it is. Yeah. And the main technical part is the inner outer grid, okay? So we set up the problem as an out company system of an inner problem near the vortex. And the outer problem, which is little bit of reckoner, not a more, okay, just a little bit of reckoner, okay, then the inner problem. So this is the inner outer group. And how do we solve the problem? So we solve the problem by narrow shoulder, not by contraction mapping. And this is because this problem has no regularity, okay? There's no way you can prove your weakness. Right? So, so we can only prove by using the RP estimates by the uh, narrow shoulder, okay? By kind of narrow shoulder degree argument. So this is another, we will never use the contraction mapping. So what are the new ingredients for the green method for the Euler, okay? The, as I was going to say, the inner problem is highly degenerate, okay? As I was going to say, and the outer problem, which is a transport equation. Now the transport equation, you cannot have any regularity. Whatever your initial condition is, you have the same regularity as your initial condition, right? So if your initial condition is L infinity, for example, and uh, the you do which proof that you can, that you, you can have still L infinity, but you use, you have a double exponential growth in time t, and which is which is extremely bad, okay, extremely bad. And in fact, uh, case of and three workers they show that this is can be attained. You know, you can have examples where you know your double exponential growth. Right? So, so this is the the two difficulty in using the green theory. One is the inner problem is. Uh, highly degenerate, and uh, the outer problem is a transport equation, right? So let's, uh, let's first uh, uh, set up the problem. 
So we we'll, we we'll take uh, 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 this is our uh, ONA equation, and we we choose our solution. We desynchronize the ONA equation. We choose our solution is summation of the new wheel, and we plug in this one in. Okay, and uh, and uh, and we do some computation, and then we use the Cauchy rules, and this will get rid of the Epsom water. So the, the next water will be Epsom square water. Okay. And now to get to to improve the error, you need to uh, say what is the next water term. So so we need to linearize around the solution. So we linearize around the solution. This is your linearized operator. This is what you get. Okay. So this linearized operator, you see that. There's no radio, radio part. Everything is non. The, everything is uh, 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 that the, the the thing is that that this part, okay, all radio solution is a solution to this part, okay? and so this is the linearized operator, the elliptic part, uh, not not the elliptic part. This is the linearized operator. You see that the linearized operator. If you look at this linearized operator, is a third order. In the stream function, and this linearized operator has a lot of candles. It's high, as I said, it's a highly degenerate. And and the one interesting candle is all radio functions uh, is in the candle. And the reason is that all radio functions are solutions are steady solutions to the oil owner to the owner. Any radio function is a solution to the to the owner. So as a result, you have an universal operator which which is which contains all the kernel. The kernel all radio function are in the kernel, and you also have additional kernel which come from the initial problem, which come from the new wheel. The new wheel has translation modes, has also uh, 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 translation modes and the scaling. Okay, the scaling mode. Okay, so how do we deal with, uh, how do we set up the inner outer grid? Okay, so we, as, a, we, we, as, as, as a before, and we, 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 should, the, we want to look for solution for the vorticity. This is the initial condition, the, the initial error, okay, initial approximation. And we do a cutoff somewhere. And then we have an inner problem, and then we have an outer problem, okay? Right? Uh, this is uh, the in the outer grid, okay? So we plug this one in, and so what is the in the outer grid system? So the in the outer grid system is the following. <clears throat> so this is the inner problem near the vortex, and then this is the outer problem outside the vortex. Now. Let me just mention. Let me just mention that we cannot do cutoff of the outer problem. We cannot do cutoff. We cannot do cutoff. The you have to for the outer problem. You have the, the you have to solve the same problem. Okay, the your plus outer is also in the it's the same order equation. The outer problem. The only problem is the error is become a little bit better. The error become a little bit better. So the outer problem is still a single uh, a transport equation, okay? A transport equation. So we solve the inner outer problem and uh, uh, by by degree argument, okay? And so so uh, we solve. Let, let us solve the outer problem first, okay? So outer problem. It's a transport equation. It's based, it's a chance you cannot do anything. It's a transport equation. Now, but you have to identify what is the singularity, what is most of the singular form. The most of the singular form is come from the gamma zero. Okay. And which is log water, which is like a log, grows like a log. And, uh, and the rest is like a Epsom square water. So this is the transport equation we need to solve for the outer problem, right? 
And for this transport equation, and we first we can have a gradient estimate. Now, this is quite uh, strange because usually you don't get a gradient estimate for the transport problem, right? right? Unless your right hand side is also C1. However, your right hand side, you can never assume Y1. What you know is your right hand side, you have smoothness in time, but you don't have smoothness in space. But still, uh, we can get gradient estimate uh, for, the, for the transport equation. And so this is an exchange of regularity of time and space. Yeah. And the second uh, result uh, for, the trans for the transport problem is, is the propagation of a support. So suppose your, your initial, your error, uh, because you solved the inner error, right? so then you have a cutoff. So the error has support away from the vortices. And then using the transport equation, you can show that your solution also has a support, which is need to be the inside, but, but, but the support, the outer problem is regular near the vortex. And this is the propagation of a support. So using this property, you can solve the outer problem. So the outer problem become a little bit regular than the inner problem. And because of these two properties, okay? Now let's look at the final, the, the inner problem, which is the main difficulty, right? This is the inner problem. So this is the third order, okay? And with some OD, okay? This is a third, so uh, this is the inner problem we need to solve, okay? Now, how to solve this inner problem? As I said before, the universal operator is highly degenerate. All radio functions are in the kernel, and also there's a kernel for the elliptical operator as well. <clears throat> so as in the Pyrrhonic Green, we're gonna use energy method. So we need to multiply this to say some kind of conservation. So we'll multiply this equation by some quantity. So what should be the right quantity? And the right quantity, and this is the upper estimates for the inner problem. And we uh, assume the inner problem solve some of the or sort of entity condition for the translation and the scaling. And then we can get uh, uh, the, the L2 estimate for the inner problem. Okay? And you're going to lose some log and uh, you're going to have gain some decay, okay? And uh, so this is the L2 estimate. So how to get this L2 estimate? So the, uh, we, we, need, we need to multiply this equation by some quantity, okay? So what is the right quantity to multiply? Well, the right quantity is a five, but then this is not good, okay? Uh, so what, the, the same, the right test function is phi over u zero, okay? U zero is the new well. So you multiply this, this function uh, inside and it then using the transport property and this term becomes zero. And so you have some conservation law. And what is phi times g? To estimate phi times g, we have to, so a stereographic projection to S2 and the estimate five times G. So, so we need some Pankari inequality, some energy uh, inequality. So this energy quality, uh, we get this inequality by stereographic projection to S2. So now you uh, reduce all these integrals to S2 and using the uh, initial conditions. And this integral just becomes some uh, expansion of the eigenfunctions uh, on S2. And using the also eigenetic condition, and uh, you, you, get, you get the L2 estimate. And, and then there's only one, one kernel, which is not good, which is the, which is the scaling parameter. And uh, the scaling parameter will give you 
a wonderful local Epsom water. So this is, uh, and uh, so you get the pancreas, you get the L2 estimate, and then you can use the ground hole and to get the, uh, uh, get the, uh, the rest of the, the proof. So, uh, since my time is almost up, let me just uh, summarize what uh, the whole in the outer green uh, I have discussed. Uh, so the last lecture is kind of, uh, uh, I, 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 I did kind of uh, uh, just a sketchy. And if you want to know more details, you can take the paper and uh, read, uh, say more details. So finally, I want to summarize all the, the five lectures uh, we have uh, on this in outer degree. So in this out, in this uh, five lectures, I introduced the in the outer degree method. And this is a very flexible and efficient method to construct and uh, analyze solutions with a singularity and the concentration or interface. And in each problem we discussed, we have to identify the, what is the inner problem and what is the outer problem and what the company. Now, to identify inner problem and outer problem, you have to make sure you have some kind of the, the inner does, is not is good in the, for the outer, outer is good for the inner. So the usually the inner problem is less regular, has singularity. The outer problem has more, is more regular, just need to be the regular than the inner problem. Okay. And we have discussed that this in the outer green method, you can deal with using this method deal with spikes, which is we did in the first lecture. And then concentration on uh, on uh, on uh, 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 minimum surfaces that we did in the second lecture, and then the uh, pyrotic going finite infinite bluff and uh, uh, multiple and uh, tower bluffs forward reverse bluff, and you can also use this in the outer going to deal with the snow decay color, right? Like in the pyrobolic problem, our kernel is not even L2. There's no L2 theory. And so we, you, we can de we deal with the slow decay kernel and the non-local ODE, non-local dynamics, and the fractional problems and the general domains. We don't need any radio symmetry for any of this. And the reaction diffuse system, even non variational problems. And in the last lecture, I discuss application even to transport problems, uh, transport equations. Now, even for transport equations, you can use this in the outer going and to construct uh, vortex type of solutions. And uh, I said, this is the uh, end of my lecture. Thank you very much for staying around and uh, thank you for, uh, for your patience and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>